Thank you. So I've got the dubious honour of being the last stop for you guys, so I'll try to make it as snappy as possible. Um, I'm going to be the host today on a badly pun game show that probably the moolah is right. Um, to kick off, I'm going to need a volunteer to come up and play it with me. So who wants to... I'm going to point fingers to Maddie Grass. Okay, so this game is called uh, Culling Causes, and we have two groups here. We've got the Tonomix Ration Farms, made up of... 15 tonne of extraction farms made up of uh, dry lots, free stall, compost bedded pack farms, and we've got pasture farms, another 15 pasture farms within New South Wales, most of which have at least some form of a kaiku platform. Uh, these farms are providing uh, the Dairy Out project with exit reasons beyond what is normal standard within the industry, so there's actually 20 different categories for which, um, to be sensible today, I've put them down into uh, seven sort of conglomerates now. The only one that's in the right order is other here. These numbers are the frequency for which a animal leaves based on a certain culling reason. So if this was true, 37% of cows that leave TMR would be lameless, 40% that leave pasture would be lameless. That might be the truth, but it's up to Maddie to put it in the order. So only other here is correct. I'll give you 30 seconds and the cow can help as well. Up you go. Oh. <laughs> so the other here includes both mastitis, somatic cell counts, um, blown up bags, pretitors, anything else. Uh, infertility includes abortions um, and failure to conceive and any other reason why you might not be managed to get the car. Go, you got, you got ten, 10 seconds. Which one up the top? Yeah. Yeah. Then, how about? I need, a, I need a ding, 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 time ticking down. Five mil. Five mil? Yeah. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, we're locked in. How are we feel? Pretty happy? Uh, okay, and the revealing is so if Maddie gets it right, she's going to win a all expenses paid trip to Disneyland. Oh. So close. So, we'll give you some uh, toothpaste to take on your trip to Disneyland. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Um, okay, so this clip that we're seeing here between Ada and Infertility, if you'd ask me before the project started, if you look at any report in the last 20, 30 years, this is the order that is normally reported. Uh, we do know in recent times uh, that fertility has been making a really good comeback based on our uh, selection criteria for the genetics, but also the management that we have around infertility and at our um, disposal, be that synchrony programs or um, miracle devices, such that we're actually breeding cows more often so they're not suffering from semen deficiency. Yeah. We're actually seeing this drop down. And to give us a little, to, to make me feel like a little bit more confident that this is a true effect, it's been seen not just in one feeding system, but across both of the feeding systems. Obviously, this roughly equals 100% on each column, so then if one drops down, something has to drop up, come up into its place, and we're having other in this circumstance. Um, I heard some people sort of questioning what is song for dairy. So that's uh, if you've got heifers coming through, usually, there's usually heifers, and um, they might have been, for instance, genomically tested, and they're not your top ones. You don't need that many replacements, and you can sell them. Same with uh, low milk, that tends to be a young animal selling reason. Um, we normally don't keep cows that don't produce much milk, so by the time they get to their second, third, fourth, they're quite rarely sold for low milk. Now, I don't want to harp too much on the difference between the TMR and pasture in this case, because there's, there's some significant challenges in both the systems recently. But you can see, at least for the data that we've got at the moment, uh, that the fertility was significantly lower in the, TMR, in the TMR farms. And if you have low kinds of fertility, you've probably got more replacements coming up. When you have more replacements, then you can start to make decisions on low milk production or selling your excess heifers. Um, and they're what we call voluntary culling options. And from a farm perspective, you want to be able to put more cows sold in this category as opposed to the ones that you sort of have in your hand for, be that out bags or infertility issues. So I think 
this switch is really important for the industry. To, if, if this could, uh, keeps on happening, and we, we see this as a true effect, it's really going to change the, potentially the shift in our focus in both genetics and um, the management of the animals. I think I'm at about five minutes, so it's right over to you guys. Thank you. Let's thank David. Do we have any questions? No questions? Was this using data sets from Australia, US? Where, where was this information from, sorry? So this is all part of the Dairy Out project, which is funded through the New South, uh, in New South Wales predominantly. So the pasture-based farms, you might have heard um, Martin and, and others using them. For the most part, about 80% of the pasture-based farms are P1 as well. We've got a couple of others joining in. The TMR farms, there's just not enough team our farms to limit it to New South Wales at the moment, so we've got a couple of South Australian and Victorian farms as well, but all within Australia. Uh, so the oldest data set, the oldest, the, the first time that we enrolled and started providing our information was about June last year, so it's fairly temporary, so it's new information, but with that we also get some seasonal fluxes going to be in there and some really challenging times which may um, with the genomic testing that we are now doing, do you see the other problems shifting down the scale? So you're saying with the genomic testing? Of cars, yes. Which means we can isolate those yep. ones that are going to have those issues. So, are you making decisions on those genomically tested calves early? Yeah. So they're getting sold before they even get into the herd? Yeah. yeah. So th these, this data is only for the lactating cows. Right. So you're selecting your top 75%, for instance, genomically right. tested calves. And then if you have surplus, they're going to get sold for yeah. dairy. Um, that I guess we're not seeing any influence on dropping the item numbers from that. Are you selecting on... much into the future. Into the future, yes. Yeah, so if, if we get to sort of a happy place with infertility, and you can see some of the, um, the breeding indexes, it's still mostly milk production, and then there was fertility because it was just shockingly bad for so long. And now we're getting like the longevity indexes as they're sort of becoming a greater part of that. includes things like lameness and type and, and, and other confirmation. So potentially we will see an improvement. Again, these all have to add up to 100 in this presentation. So you, we want to see more in, in this section as, as much as possible here, as opposed to ones where we're forced to sell the animal because of failure. Uh, well, it's just the, the percentage that we're seeing in the longevity. The longevity, yeah. So, Again, we've got only a pretty narrow frame to do that in, but the, the TMO herds were a younger herd. So they're, they were sitting at, from what we got, around about 35% replacement, 35% heifers, and the pasture ones were having about, at about 30 for the ones that we've got. It, it, it's a little bit of a, of a hard statistic when we've got farms that are expanding and farms that are happy where they are. Excellent. Let's thank David so we can all get to work.